The final update before Season of Opulence has dropped, and we've gotten some new info on how the Chalice of Opulence will work, a little more info on the new Pinnacle weapons, and some patch note previews for the next season. First up, the Chalice of Opulence. Essentially, the Chalice feels like the Moat Synthesizer and the Dawning Cookie Oven mashed together, and this is what you'll be using for the next season. You'll need runes to slot into the Chalice of Opulence. You get these runes by doing weekly bounties, opening Nessus Barge weekly chests, that's a new thing, or by using a consumable that will give you a rune after a strike, crucible, or a gambit match. Then you'll put the runes into the Chalice, you'll go do a round of the Menagerie, and you'll get rewarded. The rewards are based on what kinds of runes you put into your Chalice. Then you can upgrade the chalice with Imperials, which have various effects, from giving you more powerfuls per week, to allowing you to choose specific guns and their masterwork stat. So, pretty significant stuff. You earn Imperials from weekly bounties, certain triumphs, special consumables, and chalice upgrades. Then, you can choose what you want to upgrade first on your chalice. More rune slots to control an item's specialization, more runes or rune variety, or more powerful rewards from the menagerie. Bungie gave an example of a weapon that you could make. If you wanted to make the beloved sniper rifle with handling masterwork, you'd use a rune of jubilation, any red, and any purple rune. So it's going to be up to the community to figure out all the different combinations of weapons and masterworks and armor and all that stuff, which should be pretty fun and probably pretty quick given how the community can really rally around stuff like this. I think I'm just going to do all the info first and we'll do thoughts at the end. Uh, check the description for a timestamp. Pinnacle weapons are up next, starting with the Wendigo GL3. Picking up an Orb of Light increases the grenade's blast radius and damage. You can buff up to 6 grenades with the effect, so the only thing we're missing is how much of a damage increase we're going to get per grenade. Also, it will come with blinding grenades as a magazine option, which is pretty rare for a drum magazine grenade launcher. The Revoker Sniper from Crucible is all about shot forgiveness. Missing a shot returns the bullet to the magazine after a short time. It can only return a single bullet at a time, so I can't imagine you'll be able to just spam a ton of shots and have everything come back to you. It comes with a low zoom ambush scope and snapshot, which is good, and it'll require 3500 glory points, but you don't lose progress if you lose. So, let me clarify that since I got a bunch of questions yesterday. Pretty simple to understand. You need 3,500 glory points. It's not, you need to be 3,500 glory to get this gun. It's cumulative points that you earn while playing. So, if you win two games, let's say you go up to 100 glory, and then you lose a game, you go down to 50 glory. Your glory rank will be 50, but your glory points earned towards the sniper will still be 100. You just need to win enough games to get 3,500 total glory points. Going on win streaks will get you there faster, but again, you never lose progress. The Gambit weapon is Hush, a combat bow with a super beefed up version of Archer's Tempo called Archer's Gambit, super original name, which speeds up the time between shots. You proc Archer's Gambit by getting a hip fire precision hit. Next up, we have some weapon buffs. First, fusion rifles are getting a really solid damage buff all around. Non-exotic fusions are getting their PvE damage increased by 30 to 47% depending on the type. Exotic fusions are technically also getting buffed, but by 5% or less in PvE, so it's basically negligible. This change was made to bring legendary fusions a bit closer to their exotic counterparts. Sturm and Drang. Do you remember those? Well, ever since Forsaken launched and special weapons kind of became a thing again, these fell off the map completely, and now they're getting buffed. Storm and Stress max overcharged round capacity has been increased to 99, and the overcharge now says how many bullets you have buffed. Overcharge PvE damage was increased by 100%, and there's also a new version of Drang coming in Season of Opulence. Finally, swords are getting a much needed buff. Ammo capacity is going up to a max of 70, with start ammo going up by 10. Most of the heavy attacks on swords had their ammo cost increased from 3 to 4 to compensate for this ammo change. 
lightweight frame swords had most of their light and dash attack damage increased dramatically with aerial light attack damage going down a little bit. The reason for these changes is to make sure that players mix in light attacks with their sword use as opposed to just mashing heavy attacks constantly. Lightweight and aggressive swords will be showing up more in the new season. Next up, we have some patch note previews, which is mainly a bunch of fixes. Fixed an issue with Zero Hour on Heroic, where it's only available on the first character you completed the activity with. The luxurious toast emote was fixed so that you can lounge indefinitely. Thank you! You can't win Crucible matches by getting kills after the timer has ended. That's happened to me before. It's not fun. That annoying bug where you have to apply shaders, ornaments, consumables, etc. multiple times before it actually would accept has been fixed. And some Radiant Matrix related bugs with Ada 1 were also fixed. Exotic Catalysts are getting a little more visibility. With Season of Opulence, you can track all of them via Triumphs and they'll tell you where they can be found. When update 2.5.0 goes live, Sunshot, Graviton Lance, and Sweet Business Catalysts will be placed back into the game. For reference, we're on patch 2.2.2.2 right now. Last on the list, the Pursuits tab is getting moved to the Director's screen. You'll be able to filter between bounties only and quests only, should help you stay a little more organized, and the Pursuit inventory size has increased to 63 slots up from 50, I imagine because it's 21 per page and there's three pages. For you world first raiders out there, quote, players should be aware that turning in completed Gambit or Gambit Prime bounties from Season of the Drifter after Season of Opulence begins will result in the player's next infamy rank granting rewards capped at 700 power, end quote. When asked for clarity, if other similar systems like clan bounties or petra bounties would work the same way, the clarity given was not very clear. That's everything. Let's do some... Th I lied. That's not everything. June 6th, 10 a.m. Pacific. Bungie will be talking about the next step for Destiny 2. And they're not talking about Season of Opulence. Seems like a pretty big deal. Okay, now thoughts. The Chalice concept is pretty cool to me. It basically takes the Forge system, the Dawning Oven, the Moat Synthesizer, and just slams them all together. The gameplay loop for this season is going to be get runes, get Imperials, slot them all in, do Menagerie, and get the things that you actually want. Seems like it's the deepest version of the whole farming god roll weapons system we've been slowly introduced to over the past year, which is cool. Like I mentioned in the previous video, though, I don't know how many times I'm really going to be interested in going through the whole farm god roll weapons song and dance with these seasonal updates. I want more things to do with these god roll weapons, not exactly more ways to farm them, but I guess we actually need to play the content first before passing any more judgment. The pinnacle weapons all seem okay. I think the grenade launcher has the highest hopes out of all of them, but I'm interested in the bow as well. I really want to see how quickly you can fire bow shots with that perk procced. People seem pretty down on the sniper because it doesn't enhance your character in any way. It's just a sniper with some insurance on it, but I don't think that's a super awful thing. However, having a set of armor that has double sniper scavenger may negate the need for bullets returning to your magazine since you can just pick up a ton of ammo already. The fusion buff, the Sturm buff, and the sword buffs are all great. I was hoping for fusions to start to be able to contest shotguns in the green ammo world, so to speak, and this will definitely help to a degree. Swords also really needed some love in almost every category, with ammo being the biggest factor, so that's great. I assume there's even more stuff coming with the patch. I would be pretty shocked if that was everything. Some people were disappointed by the lack of scout rifle changes teased. I really hope scouts get some love, but I think for that to happen, pulse rifle range really needs to be reined in. Scouts are only good at the longest of ranges, and there aren't that many things in the game where you need to be, or even physically can be, that far away. Finally, the bungee stream on the 6th. What could it be? Well, it's probably not Destiny 3, considering the wording on the message says Destiny 2 right on it. Bungie is not usually one to start talking about content unless they're pretty close to a release, save for the initial release of Destiny 1. 
So this could be signaling some sort of expansion in the coming months. It could be them talking about how seasons might change. Maybe they're going to a whole new system. Maybe they're continuing. It, it could be anything, really. We may have a situation where Borderlands 3 is releasing around the same time as the next big Destiny thing, which for someone like me sounds like a YouTube and Twitch nightmare, but we're just going to have to wait and see, I guess. Fortunately, not too long, though. That is your final Season of Opulence preview before it launches. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.